We have Jackson State's football schedule, the real one this time. Prairie View A&M wins indoor swag for the second year in a row, and we recap the CIAA season ahead of the tournament. Oh, yeah, it's Locked on HBCU. Play my music. <laughs> on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU Athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports Editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And Jackson State's football schedule has dropped. For real this time. No more leaks, no more discussions, no more back and forth. It has dropped for real. It's official, and I give it two thumbs up. I love it. I absolutely love this schedule. And last time that we discussed a Jackson State football schedule, let's be very careful with our words here, right? Last time that we discussed a Jackson State football schedule, it was not official. It was not real. And I don't think I, this is what I thought. Okay. I, I know I got a lot of comments, not a lot, but I got a couple of comments from Jackson State fans, and I love it because I love that passion. I love that passion behind the school and that backing behind it, you know. And we had different perspectives, and some of us had different priorities, which is why I think we had different perspectives. We were just focused on two different aspects of this conversation. But I love the comments, you know, because I love it because I know y'all, I know y'all care. Like, I know y'all really go hard behind y'all school, and I love that. So, you know, disagreement aside, and I don't mind about disagreement. I love talking to you. So I appreciate you coming in, all of you, you know. Um, even people like, that's not the schedule, all right? You know, and I, look, I still think that was something that was in discussion. I don't think it was official. And after all of the backlash that happened, no way you could go with it. But I don't think that would have been the official schedule anyway. That's why I called it like a leak, right? I never thought it was a real schedule. But now... In front of us, I have tangible, I have the real life schedule. And I love it because it gives me all the things that I want. I look at it and I say, this is great. I'm glad Jackson State came out and refuted the schedule and came back with this one. Shut me up. All that other stuff I talked a week and a half ago, done. All the, the criticism. Now, it wasn't a lot, but it was a little bit of criticism in there as part of the larger conversation of do these games even matter for HBCUs? I love it, but all of that is done now. Right. I think that conversation is still worth it. But focusing on Jackson State as our test subject or as the the object of conversation is no more after this schedule, because this schedule they release gives me all of the things that I want. And I think it's so great for the HBCU brand. I think it's so great. And when I look at it, I want to read it to you because I want to give the actual schedule in order. Right. So just so you know what the difference is, I don't know if you remember the the complaint, but the complaint was basically that Jackson State was scheduling Lane College and they were punching down. But this gives me everything that I want. It gives me conference play. It gives me tradition. It gives me the opportunity to punch up or make a statement. Those are one and the same, right? And those give me all those things. But let me give you the schedule itself first so that you know what it is, right? So they start off the season against Florida A&M at the Orange Blossom Classic, then against Tennessee State in the Southern Heritage Classic. So you have two classics back to back. Then you, you at home, you're at home versus Grambling, then at home versus Mississippi Valley State, go on a roll for Alabama State and Bethune-Cookman. Then for homecoming, you have Campbell out of the Big South coming in. Then you go to, or you have Southern coming to you. So it's two on, two off, two on, right? And then you have Southern coming. Then you travel to Texas Southern. And you have a, a neutral site game against Alabama A&M with the Gulf Coast uh, Challenge in Mobile. And then you go to Alcorn, Alcorn to finish the season. So this is important because, like I said, it gives me everything that I want. It gives me conference play. It gives me tradition. An opportunity to punch up or an opportunity to make a statement. So let's get into it. In there, you have four home games. You have four away games. You have three neutral site games out of 11. In your conference play, you're going to have that every year. So you're going to have nine conference games every single year. Those nine, just those aren't really need, nothing we need to talk about. But I will mention that they are facing Alabama A&M in the Gulf Coast Challenge and something that we didn't expect to happen. Now, 
I don't know if the idea or the decision to play the Southern Heritage Classic impacted the ideal Birmingham, because they were supposed to face University of Arkansas Pine Bluff in Birmingham in the SWAC, SWAC Classic. But that seemingly was replaced by the Gulf Coast Challenge against Alabama A&M in Mobile. I don't know if maybe the decision to go back and play that Southern Heritage Classic impacted that. I have no idea. But that's not on the table, and they're not even facing UAPB anymore. So when you look at it, you have that. That's the one thing in conference play that I want to point out, and it really isn't a negative or a positive. It's just something to point out, something different than we thought. So, But that brings me to tradition, the idea of, of the classics. It brings me to tradition, and I love it because one more year with the Southern Heritage Classic, one more year. And I understand that this is the last year. I understand it won't continue going to 2023 and beyond. Maybe it'll come back together. You know, Jackson State did miss a couple of years in the past. But I love tradition. Man, I'm a sucker for that. I'm a sentimental guy. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, sometimes, like, when I see things like this, I'm like, man, that's good. Like, it's just it's just nice. It, it hits the heartstrings, right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. But it hits your heartstrings in the sense that I like that Tennessee State versus Jackson State is going to happen one more time. Eddie George versus Deion Sanders. I think it getting a, a proper farewell is nice. It's it's something to note. So I appreciate that 100%. And, you know, bring that bring that business to Memphis one more time. And I understand that the business side of it, sometimes I, I let my heart get ahead of my mind, but my mind understands the business side of it and having to move on. So that is what that is. And I completely get it. I won't, I won't say anything about it. I get it. That is the business side that's best for you. But then the other part of tradition, is the Orange Blossom Classic. And that was a phenomenal game between the two best teams in the SWAC last year. Arguably, I'm going to say two of the three best teams in the D1 HBCU landscape, maybe HBCU landscape, period. But because Bowie State definitely has an argument for being that, that quality, right? Because they had a fantastic year and they were really good. And they had some players that showed out in that HBCU Legacy Bowl as well. But um, Florida A&M versus Jackson State. I think has a chance to become one of the biggest FCS regular season games that's out. I really do. Because with Willie Simmons and Deion Sanders at the helm, these teams I expect to be good for a, a large amount of time. And they keep going against each other in the Orange Blossom Classic every single year. This will be a, a major draw. This will be a major draw with people coming out and looking. And honestly, with how it is right now, with how it is, this is way getting ahead of myself. But, but check me. All right, I'm going to say it. With the way things are looking right now, this game could decide who goes to the FCS playoffs, the loser of this game, because these teams were so good that if Jackson State would have lost that game last year, they would have been in the FCS playoffs. Obviously, the SWAC doesn't have an automatic bid. They don't have a bid, period, because of the celebration bowl, right? And then that automatic bid brings me to my last thing, and that's the ability to punch up because they don't have a chance to get into the, into the playoffs if they win all their games, right? So let's just assume for Jackson State – purposes that they win all their games they're playing Campbell and that's a big South team in a situation where you have the ability to punch up at a conference that does have an automatic bid yes the Ohio Valley uh, Conference does with Tennessee State but for some reason it's just not looked at the same right but one thing that you have to remember is that people look at HBCUs a certain kind of way regardless of where they are and Tennessee State hasn't just taken over the OVC so with that being said now playing Campbell a team that has struggled last year in the COVID year but two years before that the last two years before that, both of them, they had winning records. So with all that being said, you have an opportunity to punch up at a team that, hey, no more looking down on this on this conference, on the SWAC or the MEAC for that purpose, just because there is no automatic bid. We're not in the playoffs, but don't think we can't beat some of the other teams in the FCS. And that's all that I ever asked for from them. And that's why I'm so happy, because whether it was group of five, other FCS teams, I wanted something that other people could not take away from the HBCU brand. And I believe that that facing Campbell, especially on homecoming, that could be a quality homecoming win. And it's just going to be a quality win in period. I mean, in, in general, if you're able to get it done. So I'm so excited to see them face off against Campbell. This is exactly what I wanted. I have absolutely no complaints. I get my conference play that I know I'm going to get. I get the, the tradition of the Orange Blossom Classic and the Southern Heritage Classic for one more year. And then finally, I get an opportunity to punch up and knock off a team in a big South and make the FCS market realize, oh yeah, we really here. I love this schedule. You get two thumbs up out of me. This is great. No complaints at all. You know, and going forward, I want to talk about Prairie View A&M. We're going to stick it in the SWAC and we're going to discuss 
how Prairie View a and maybe is changing the guard in women's track and field. But first, I want to tell you about Built Bar. I'm sure that that track team is using some sort of Built Bar, right? Whether that's the puff, whether that's the regular kind, I'm sure they're getting it. They love the 17 grams of protein, the four net carbs, the four grams of sugar, because it is so versatile. And you're going into a track meet, you don't want anything too heavy, but you want something that, you know, just get you a nice snack, holds you over, but then you want it to taste good. Bill Bar gives you all of that. I love it because it's covered in chocolate. It's covered in chocolate, so you know it's good. It has so many different flavors. I don't know. Maybe the Sprinters eating the cookies and cream. Maybe the, the discus throwers are eating the, the, ruby, the ruby chocolate. Who knows? There's so many different flavors that every single event could have their own flavor. Maybe that's what finally led to their success and knocking off the... We ain't gonna get into it, but look, I almost hopped into the segment. I'm so excited. But look, Built Bar is so delicious, and they have everything that you need, man. They have a multitude of flavors, they have a lot of health benefits, and you don't have to feel guilty because they're gonna taste delicious and they're gonna keep you healthy on your diet and keep going with it, right? So go to build.com, use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your offer and get ahead of myself this time. Y'all listen for Prairie View taking over the swag indoor track and field. All right, as we keep on rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, thank you for making us your first listen of the day every day. And today's word of the day is transpire, meaning to happen or to become known. And we're going to discuss Prairie View A&M because they have won the SWAC Indoor Championship on the women's side for the second time in a row. Is this a changing of the guard? Listen, PV winning this, this women's indoor is major because it isn't the first time, it's the second time. and. I think that it could represent. I'm not saying that it is going to represent because it takes a little bit of time. And I think another event later on in the year is going to really impact how we look at this conversation. But Prairie View, A&M's women's track and field team winning indoor for the second year in a row could signify a changing of the guard. And here's the thing. PV has had a strong track and field team for a while. They've had a couple of second place finishes. They've been really good and competitive for a couple of years now. Like we cannot ignore that when talking about this. However, there's been one thing because it's all about the ring, right? It's all about the ring because over everything else, that's what every athlete, regardless of the of the sport, is looking for. They're looking for that ring. They're looking for that championship, the ultimate goal. Yes, being good is is is, is good, but winning it all is great, and that's what Prairie View was looking for. And they finally got it done the last two years. So with that being said, let's look at it. What was what was the problem with them not getting over the hump? And that's because the hump, the impediment for everybody in the SWAT was Alabama State. On the women's side, they won 11 years in a row. There's two events every year. They won all of them. So for 22 straight events, Alabama State was just dominating women's track and field in the SWAT. It's boring. I mean, you ever heard people just be like, man, why Alabama got to win every year? These teams really won every year, every single year. Alabama wasn't even winning every year. They would have somebody take over every now and then. They're really winning 11 years in a row, 22 straight championships. Man, that's a recruiting tactic. Yeah, you can go over there. You can probably get a little run. You can run fast, whatever. You can run your little 400. But at the end of the day, you come here, you're going to run your 400, and you're going to get a ring. That's a recruiting tactic. All right. So you could go into every spring just kind of betting on Alabama State. But I think that last year when the streak was broken, it's like, oh, they're beatable. They're beatable. I don't have to bet on them every year. It's not a surefire thing. That that cloak of invincibility, that that untouchableness. I don't think that's a word, but I'm I'm using it today. The untouchableness. (laughs) But just that that era, that aura of being untouchable. It was gone. Because now you know that team can win, right? And it's major because PV broke that streak in indoors on the women's side. The men's won this year as well, you know? And that, that was a clean sweep as far as PV goes on the on the track and field side of things. But we're going to focus on the women's. We just have to give a quick little nod saying how good this track and field team was on both genders, right? Men and women's. But overall, this is major because they won that competition by 30 points in, tw- in 2021. Right now, you fast forward to 2022, they won again. But let's look at the spring of 2021. They win indoors. Alabama State comes back and they win outdoors, right? This does not say that Alabama State is not great. That does not say that they cannot still win championships. It's just this invincibility, this undefeated streak, just the fact that nobody can touch them is gone. It does not feel like that anymore. That's all we're saying. 
So now Alabama State wins the outdoors in the spring. Now you come back here and all eyes are here. What's going on with PV versus Alabama State? That's what it feels like now. They win again. Now, if you win in outdoors, and I don't want to jump it because you should celebrate winning back-to-back -back indoors. And this could mean that PV could be the best indoor team for a couple of years now. That's exactly what it could represent. Because Alabama State always had the ability to say, we're going to win rings. We're going to win rings. And that's the only team in the conference that could say that. Nobody else could say it. But with that happening, now you have another team who can say, we win rings. Plural, too. We win rings. And that, that that's all it takes to, to cripple just this empire of can't be touched, can't be moved, can't be stopped. All right. That's no longer how it's going to happen. Prairie View is going to get some recruits and say, we can win rings. And now that's going to spread out the talent. And that could really impact anybody. Who knows? A new team like Bethune Cookman could come up and be like, well, now we have an opportunity to win because there's more talent spread out. All the talent didn't go to one school. And I think that's the, the potential impact of this of this victory. And if you go into outdoors, oh, we might have a new queen in it. You go win outdoors because you only lost by seven points last year if you're PV. You know you're right there. We could have another queen. We could be seeing the era of Alabama State tra transitioning into the era of Prairie View. Ooh, I can see it happening. That's all I'm saying. I can see it happening, and that's all it takes. And this could be major because present day, present day, PV has won the indoors two years in a row. Two years in a row, which means they are not just serious players. They are contenders. They are people who can actually win. You go in there, and they deserve to be the favorites going in outdoors next year. I mean, into indoors next year. It's a real possibility that now Prairie View has a new streak going on. I don't. It's going to be hard to ever touch 22 in a row. You don't need that. But as more teams break apart and more talent is just spread out, there's so many more opportunities for other teams to win in the SWAC. And that's why this is major. It's major because you could have a new person at the top as far as Prairie View goes in that middle could actually feel like a middle and not just feel like top and bottom. That's why I think this victory is so major because it impacts not just Prairie View in the fact of they're two-time champions now, not just Alabama State in the, in the sense that their streak was broken, but it, it helps all the other teams because now you know you can win. It's not just Alabama State or nothing. You know that you can win. And then also maybe that, that breakup of talent going to other places begins to occur begins to occur excuse me and going forward i want to discuss the ciaa season because i want to wrap it up we're going into the tournament the tournament has begun but let's wrap up the season let's talk about the superlatives that we're giving out and how that just tells the story of the season but first i want to tell you about betonline.net the best place that you could possibly go for all of your wagering needs it's this simple i understand that football season is done and that's a lot of people's favorite sport but you still have basketball season coming off of all-star weekend i'm I want to see them have a prop of how long till Zion Williamson returns. That's the prop I want to see them have, right? You can have NCAA um, Baseball World Series. You're going to have the NCAA tournament coming up. There are so many things that you can wager on on betonline.net, and they're the exclusive partner of Locked On Network, right? Man, this is the best place to go. If you want to have player props, they're good for that. If you want to have just betting on the game in general, they're good for that. And it's not just basketball. You heard all the other sports that I named, but they also have boxing, UFC, hockey. They have all of the things that you need. If you don't want to bet on any sports, just do your favorite Vegas casino games. It's really that simple. So when I look at it, I say betonline.net has everything that I need. They have all different types of bets. Why would I go anywhere else? And I still ain't found the answer to that. So y'all make sure y'all go to betonline.net when you're trying to wager. It's the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, as we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked On HBCU, we're going to look at the CIAA season by way of the superlatives, the offensive player of the year, or the player of the year, defensive player of the year, coach of the year, on the women's and men's side as we get prepared for our tournament coverage, right? The tournament has already begun, but let's wrap it up as we're getting into, we have the opening round, but as we get into the quarterfinals, let's just take a look back. Let's reminisce. Let's take a, a stroll down memory, memory lane and we look at how this season has been going. So with all that being said, let's get into it because I think that Lincoln did a great job this year. And if you're a Lincoln fan, like if you're a Lincoln Tiger, 
you're probably super excited and you're saying, man, the future looks bright. At least this present is shining, right? Because you have success on the women's and the men's side. It wasn't just a, a team that was really good on one and kind of middle of the pack on the other. No, and you had a lot of success. You had a lot of standout. You had two standout players. Both of the coaches, excuse me, both of the players of the year came from Lincoln. And one of the coaches of the year came from Lincoln. So that's a really good job. As far as superlatives go, no other school has more. I don't think that's hard to assume. There's not many superlatives. There's eight. We're going to go over six of them today, right? We're not going to go over the rookies of the year. But they had three superlatives. Player of the year, player of the year, coach of the year. I think having player of the year on both sides of the ball is impressive enough. Honestly, you just look at it. You have both of the players of the year. You were hooping. You were hooping. So you have Breonna Brown. You have uh, Zarian Blue. It, when I look at it, I say, man, let's look at Brown first, right? It's ladies first. Let's look at her first. And they're both real good scorers. They're both real good scorers. But when it comes to Brown, she does her best damage behind the arc. And you look at CIA, look at their website, CIAA, not the CIA, uh, but the CIAA. And they have her as the best three-point shooter by numbers, most made per game. And then also... She is the best in percentage wise. So when I look at it, that's where she does her most damage. And that's what she comes in to do. She comes in and she scores. She plays a moderate amount of minutes. She plays about three quarters, so only 30 minutes. There's some people who play up to 35, 36. She plays about 30 minutes a game and she comes in and leads the, lead the uh, conference in scoring. She's the best scorer in the conference and she does a lot of damage behind the three point line. When you look at Zarian Blue, he also shoots the three pointer really well. He doesn't shoot it at the same clip rate. As, as Brown does, he doesn't shoot it as much, but when he does shoot it, he's very efficient. So I look at it and I say, man, both of these both of these players at the same school shoot the ball really well. They shoot the ball really well from three, but let's give something different for, for Blue. And with Blue, I want to I wanna highlight the other aspects of his game because he's a very efficient scorer, whether that's at the three-point line or in the two-point range. It doesn't matter. He's top five in that. But then also... He has the ability to score the ball as well as distribute, as well as get boards. He's top 10 in assists. He's top 10 in rebounds. He affects the game in so many different ways, you know, and he also top five in steals. So when you look at it, he is a scorer. He's a guy who distributes the ball well and facilitates the offense well. He's a guy who gets boards, and he also gets turnovers in the sense of creating extra possessions for his offense. He does everything, and this is top five, top 10 rankings in the conference. So when you look at it, they also have the coach of the year, like I said, but then also on the men's side. And then on the women's side, let's get back to the defensive player of the year. You have Syrian Pitts, the most dominant force in the, in the CIAA, period, in the paint. The most dominant force in the paint in this conference because she leads the conference in rebounds. She leads the conference in blocks. You want to know why she's the defensive player of the year? There you go. It's just that simple. You dominate the boards, you get a lot of blocks, and you alter the game. That's what she does really well. You know, her, she's from Elizabeth City State, and also her coach, Lewis, is also the coach of the year. So you have another school that's doubling up. Now let's wrap it up because we have one more person, right? We have one more person, and we're going to recap them all in a list form after this. And that's Navar, uh, uh, Navar Elmore. When I look at Elmore, it's not so much the rebounds. Yes, the rebounds help. He's, he's, he's fifth, tied for fifth in rebound, and that helps. Don't get me wrong. But his ability to alter shots is out of this world. He averages nearly three blocks per game, 2.8. When I look at that and I see that, I say, defensive player of the year right now, I don't want to hear anything else. Three games or three blocks a game is ridiculous. And that's what he's averaging this year. He's a complete shot changer. And he makes people have to second guess how they're going to score against his team. Livingston is Livingston is in the in the tournament, and you cannot tell me that Elmore does not have a big part to do with it. So now we're going to read and we're going to go through the women's player of the year, Brianna Brown out of Lincoln, defensive player of the year, Syrian Pitts out of Elizabeth State, or excuse me, Elizabeth City State. And then coach of the year is Tanisha Lewis out of Elizabeth City State. Go to the men's, the player of the year, Zarian Blue out of Lincoln, defensive player of the year, Nav uh, Navarre Elmore out of Livingston, and then coach of the year is Cor Corey Lowry out of Lincoln. So those are your CIAA superlatives, and that is just giving us a little heads up going into the tournament.
So I thank you for making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. If you enjoyed our CIA talk, talk, then you will really enjoy when Candace Cooper comes on tomorrow and she gives a little bit of insight going into the CIAA tournament. So for your second listen of the day, make sure you're checking out the NFL Draft, Locked On NFL Draft show. I'm my boy Crocker. Got Ryan Tracy. Man, listen. This is the best insight that you can have. No more waiting until April rolls around to try to get your draft knowledge. Get yourself smart now. I know I'm trying to. I'm trying to get ready for all of my draft news. And that's my first place that I go locked on NFL draft. Make sure you're checking them out. And in the meantime, in between time, y'all know where y'all can find me on that blue app, that bird. Yes, Twitter at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care, stay blessed. Peace.